Ask. Yeah, now it's going to come. Good evening, uh, Wednesday night program. Good evening, those who are watching on YouTube. I sure hope that uh, you are watching faithfully. And thank you for those uh, who are in class right now. It's always encouraging to look at faces, real faces and so forth. And we sure hope that things will be back to normal um, before long. So uh, before I do pray, I would like to, um, I have been looking at Google Analytics and so on. And I would like to ask you, beloved present, and also those who watch on YouTube, to persevere. It's very easy to get away, to get carried away with uh, all kinds of programs apart from the Bible study. And um, I think the situation is helping right now for a lack of motivation at large. We hear about the situation so much that we get carried away with this. And um, I think it could be too much. So just a word of kind exhortation to you. I would like you to persevere. You've been doing this class for three years and plus right now. And I would like us to finish in beauty. As far as I am concerned, without pride, I will finish it in beauty because it forces me to review my notes and do it in this capacity. But beloved, I will say it one more time. The study of the life of Christ from a Jewish perspective will prove to be, during your lifetime, the most important Bible study that you have been attending. So if you are an online student right now, I would like you to persevere to look at the totality of videos and so on so that you may accumulate that kind of information for Division 9 and 10 to come. This is a kind word of uh, admonition because I have that kind of concern at large for the church at large. I think that we're going slack, we're going a bit sluggish in our mindset, hiding ourselves and so on, and I don't find it healthy at all. I'd rather to be transparent with you. That's what I wanted to say to you. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I want to start by thanking you because you're not sluggish about us. If we compare my faithfulness and our faithfulness in comparison to your son, we diminish quite fast. Father, in this time, help us to classify our priorities. How can we trust this world? We can't. Things are changing daily. Money is being injected by buckets right now. Money that the country does not necessarily have. And it should not be our concern. If we look at the example of Christ Jesus when he came, it was not about the donation box. It was about redemption. Finding those that were lost like us. What can we give back? We cannot give back. The price is too high. We can give our discipleship make our commitment stronger and stronger despite any kind of outside situation. Trusting you, Father. May it be our goal. And by your grace, Father, alone may it be achieved. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we were in paragraph 153, the very first um, paragraph out of Division 9, and I would like to finish that with you, capital A, the arrest. We have looked at a few things. Perhaps the, my favorite thing was the fact that when he forced the group to, to the ground by saying, I am the one that, you, um, that you're looking for, with the force of his glory, just the power of the I, uh, I am Jehovah, and so on, he forced the group to the ground. And then we look at Judas betraying the Messiah with a kiss, and I explained to you that Judas profaned the sacred by doing so. Because by kissing your rabbi on the cheek many times, it's simply a sign of submissiveness to the teaching of that rabbi. And for the Jewish people, it's quite sacred when they embrace a rabbi, fall under the feet of a rabbi. So he betrayed the Lord Jesus with a kiss. Turn with me into your harmony in John verse 10. Page 207 of your harmony. Page 207 of your harmony, because we need to finish the arrest. You go on John verse 10, beloved, page 207. I will read just a few verses, maybe 10, 11, and 12, and then we'll finish the exposition. Simon Peter, therefore having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Circled the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And now the servant's name was Malchus. Circled the name Malchus. 
in the Garden of Gethsemane right now. Peter gets in and pulls out his sword, a literal sword, a single sword. What he does is not too bad because it's a proof of what he said in the upper room that he was willing to die for the Messiah. So in all, it's not too bad. He said it in John chapter 13, verse 37. He is simply up to his word, to a point. John chapter 13, verse 37. We saw this together not too long ago in paragraph 147. In Matthew verse 51, in, Mar in Matthew verse 51, and behold, one of them that were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, this is Peter, and smote the servant, circled the, uh, the definite article, the servant of the high priest, and struck off his ear. The servant with the definite article has a particular importance. And notice one thing, that this is John that gave us more detail about the servant. Because he mentioned his name, Malchus. Why does John give us a bit more detail here? It's because the family of John, the apostle who wrote the book of John, and the family of the high priests were acquainted together. We will see that later. The family of John and the family of the high priests knew each other. So that's why only John mentioned the name Malchus. In verse 10, you can circle the name Malchus. Go to Luke 51, but Jesus answered and said, Allow you thus far, or suffer you thus far, and he touched his ear and healed him. Circle the touching of his ear and the healing right there. This is only reported by Luke. Why? Luke is the doctor. So this is why only Luke gives us that piece of information. He is the only one that records it. And notice, please, that the event is recorded in all four Gospels account, but you know Luke's interest, being a family doctor type of thing, he likes that kind of stuff. Let me say two things about this, about the miracle there. It's a miracle. This is the only miracle done by Jesus on a fresh wound. On a fresh wound. Yes, this is number one, two things. Number one, this is the only miracle performed by Jesus or recorded on being on a fresh wound. If he did more than this, it's not recorded. And he assuredly did more than this. And the second thing, you like it, it's the only miracle performed on an enemy. This is the only miracle of Jesus that was done on an enemy. Go to John verse 11. Jesus therefore on the right hand side. Jesus therefore said unto Peter, put up the sword into it, the sheet. <clears throat> the cup which the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? Circle, shall I not drink it? It's a reference to the Gethsemane, the victory over the agony that Jesus had a few weeks ago. Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, the, 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 the Malchus, the high priest, he goes to arrest him. So he's not a friend. Yeah. It's an enemy, like the group, like the cohort, like the Pharisees and so on. That wants his arrest. But he doesn't see him as an enemy. No, but this is, this is an enemy, of course. His love for that person and so on. But it's an enemy that goes for the arrest. So in that sense, he is right now classified as an enemy. Somebody that is against him. Okay? All right, the victory over Jesus on the spiritual warfare. Nothing will interfere with it. Even Peter with the drinking of the cup, nothing will happen 
in order to Jesus to drink the cup that he has to drink. That's your point number two. We have three lessons to Peter in that context. They are all in Matthew. Okay, visualize your Matthew's account. Let's make three lessons for Peter. Matthew verse 52. Then Jesus said unto him, this is Peter, put up again your sword into its place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Matthew verse 52, first lesson. The sword cannot be used for the defense of the faith. The sword, a literal sword, not the sword ministry, but the sword, a knife, cannot be used for the defense of the faith. In life, there could be a proper place for the sword, such as in personal defense, you can use it, or for the defense of the state. These things can be used. That's why the police, they have guns, baton, and so on. And if I need to defend my wife here and I put my hand of anything, you do it. For the defense, personal defense, laying down our lives for the wives and so on. And the personal defense of the state. Not personal, but the defense of the state. Yet for the faith, one must turn the other cheek. Keep that in mind. For the faith, you turn the other cheek. No physical defense for the faith. We need to become martyrs and turn the other cheek. This is the first lesson for Peter. The second lesson for Peter is in Matthew verse 53. Come, page 207 still. Or do you think that I cannot beseech my father... And he shall even now send me then 12 legions, circle carefully 12 legions of angels. Circle that. This is a little bit in relationship, beloved, online that I basically was saying here. Spiritual conflict must be fought by spiritual means. Are you in a spiritual battle right now? I am, and I know you are. Spiritual conflict must be fought by spiritual means. Where do you find it? In the Bible, in your word, all the time. Jesus was having at his disposal 12 legions of angels. What is a legion? Between 3,000 and 6,000 angels at his disposal. Twelve legions of angels. One legion is anywhere between 3,000 and 6,000 angels. Jesus could use them at will. Do you think that he needs the sword of Peter? Not quite. That was the totality of your second point, okay? Point number three, you come to Matthew 54, 55, and 56 at the very bottom. How then should the scriptures be fulfilled? Circle be fulfilled. That thus it must be. In that hour, said Jesus to the multitude, are you come out as against a robber with swords and staves to seize me? I sat daily in the temple teaching, and you, and you took me not. But all this is to come to pass, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Circle that. All the disciples left him and fled. Let's keep it simple. Put in your notes, all of this is necessary to fulfill the prophecies. Everything is going according to plan. All of this is necessary to fulfill prophecies. All of this is necessary to fulfill prophecies. And when they realize that Jesus will go no further than this, guess what happened? They quit. They scatter in verse 56. 
meaning they disperse. They left, him. they left him. That's it. So much for the faithfulness. They're human. The spirit is, is willing, but the flesh is weak. They ran away, they scattered type of thing, even if they, they said in the upper room discourse, we'll never forsake, we will not give up, I'll lay down my life for you. Keep in mind, again, always that they still labored to an extent that he was going to establish the kingdom right then. And right now they realize that it's going nowhere, so they fled and so on. All of it is in according to the scriptures because he needs to die alone, be buried alone, and so on. Peter will go further than that. It is a betrayal, but they are chosen. They will regather. He will show grace, as we will see in Division 9 and in Division 10. All of it is for, it's forgiven. It's a good lesson for us because how often we, we, we flee ourselves, often. Let's deal with Mr. Mark. Come with me in Mark 51 and 52, page 208 on the left-hand side, often misunderstood. Come with me and concentrate. A certain young man, circle certain young man, followed with him. 51 on the left hand side, page 208. A certain young man followed with him, having a linen cloth cast about him over his naked body. And they lay hold on him, but he left the linen cloth and he fled naked. As we have seen in the past, in the first century, when they wrote biographies, the writer would write himself into a story when he was an eyewitness of an event. Okay? And that's the way Mark wrote himself out of, out of the event. So John refers himself as the apostle whom Jesus loved. It's not because John was more loved at all. It's because instead I did that, he said, the apostle whom Jesus loved. So the young man that fled naked here is John Mark, the author of the book of Mark. It's John Mark himself writing the account, letting, letting his name out of the account. But why naked? Because that's probably in the, in the pulling and so on. I don't know exactly why naked, but that's how. He was having his, or keep in mind that I gave you the outer coat, the piece of garment. I will give you the piece of garment that the first century male had on his body. Yeah. Okay. Paragraph 154. Look at your outline right now. Capital B, the religious trial. Look at it carefully. Capital B, the religious trial. Because Jesus will undergo two distinct trials. Number one, the religious trial, which six steps, but each of the trials have three stages. The other trial, look at capital C right now, the civil trial, you have stage one, stage two, and stage three. Same as the first one, but we have events in between right now. So. What you note right now, in order to understand the last days of Jesus and so on, it's imperative to make a distinction between the religious trial or the civil trial. Okay? And I call them sometimes the religious Jewish trial is the same, or the civil slash Roman trial is the same. So if you are ready with me, you make a note right now, the issue of the religious trial is blasphemy. Write that down big. The issue of the religious trial is blasphemy. Blasphemy is not an issue of the civil trial. The Roman don't care if you proclaim yourself to be God. Mm -hmm. I Means that you smoke too much weed and they don't, they don't care about these things. So, blasphemy is the religious trial. If you are ready with me, we take point one, the trial before Annas, stage one. You are on paragraph 54 right now, 154. We will see the, the verses in a moment. The purpose here is to try to establish a religious charge. 
The purpose right here is to try to establish a religious charge against him, of course. One point to remember, remember that they are not ready. Remember that. It's chaotic. He forced their hand, their hands to act that night. They should be ready, but they're not. They don't have the false witness ready and so on and so forth. It's a piece of important information to note. Annas... Serve as a high priest between the year 7 and 14 AD. Annast served as a high priest between the years of 7, from 7 to 14 AD. He was deposed, he was relieved of his function in A.D. 14, by Valerius Gratus. Valerius Gratus, of course, Roman. And he was deposed of his function, Annas, in the year 14 A.D. For the Jewish people, he was still the high priest, so that's why you see him here. 14 A.D. Oh, he was deposed. Here's the year the, the, the 30 AD. Yeah. He was still high priest for the Jews. So that's why, or he was still in control. And Annas was succeeded by four sons. Annas was succeeded by four sons. I don't need to name them right now. And remember one thing. The famous money changing mm -hmm. and the animals, how was it called by the Pharisees? The bazaar of the sons of Annas. Because Annas was the head of it. Remember also that Jesus overthrew the money changers how many times? Twice. Twice. At the beginning of his ministry and at the end of his ministry. So simply put on your notes that Annas has a personal grudge against Jesus. Hannes has a personal animosity holding a grunge against Jesus. Come with me in your harmony in page 209 at the top, verse 12 of paragraph 154. So the band, that's the cohort, and the chief captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first, circle Annas first. For he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, you can circle Caiaphas if you wish, which was the high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Circle should die for the people. Like I said, here you have the bands. This is not the legion, but this is the cohort. The chief captain is the leader of the cohort. And the officers are the temple police. Here you have the violation of law number four. There was to be no trial before the morning sacrifice. Look at verse 14 again. Now Caiaphas was he that gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient for that man that should die, that that man should die for the people. Make a note that the sentence was decreed way before the trial. You know that, that they were very much willing to put him to death. So write down, the sentence was decreed way before the trial. I would like to challenge your memory. The decision to kill him goes back to paragraph... 61. No, a little bit later than that, right after the resurrection of Lazarus, when they said, 
they decided to kill him. They convened the Sanhedrin together because it was a specific miracle. And that's where Caiaphas said it's expedient for one man should die for not the nation to perish. Paragraph 119, verse 53. 119, verse 53. Verses 20 to 22. Let's do 19 also. The high priest before, therefore asked Jesus of his disciple, circle of his disciple and of his teaching, circle and of his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have ever taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. In secret, I spoke nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask them that they have heard me. Circle, ask them that they have heard me. What I spoke unto them, behold, these how the things which I said. And when he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus, circle struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Answer you the high priest this way? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why do you smite me? In verses 20 to 22, you have the evidence of a secret trial, violation of law 5. No secret trial, only public one. If you go back with me with verse 19, ask uh, uh, Annas, ask about two things, his disciple and his teaching. His disciples, plural, and his teaching. Why do, does he ask it? In order to incriminate them and him also. But right here in verse 20, Jesus challenges them to keep their own laws. That's for them. It's their responsibility to produce the two or three witnesses about him. What do you think Jesus it challenges them to keep their own laws, the Mishnahic laws or the good laws, the 22 laws that he derives. Cling to your guns, guys. That's for them. This is their responsibility to come up with two or three witnesses against him. So if he taught bad stuff, it should be easy to find. Mm -hmm. Okay? If he was in bad stuff, false teaching or whatnot, it should be easy to find the witnesses. And in verse 21, when he says, why do you ask me? is clinging to his own right. You see a good example of Jesus holding to his own right right now. That's his right to do so. Produce them. That's your laws, by the way. Verse 22, you have the first mistreatment, okay? Struck Jesus, circle struck Jesus, and I would like you to make a page, maybe a part of mistreatments, that would be nice because there will be many mistreat, uh, mistreatment, mistreatments and um, mockeries. So here the beatings that he suffer on that night is the first mistreatments of Jesus, the first mistreatment of Jesus. And the officer is who? That's the temple police. Temple police. 23b, in his hands saying, do you answer the high priest so? The, the high priest so Jesus answered him, if I have spoken ev evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why do you stuck me? Do you struck me? Basically, put in your notes, he demands legal procedures. He's asking for legal procedures. He's not supposed to be smitten at that point. We'll do another five, ten minutes and pause. Now, notice a few facts before we move on to point number two in paragraph 155a. Just make them, they are easy. Paragraph 55 right now, the first one, uh, 55, uh, 54, paragraph 154, it ended in failure. They cannot come up with religious charge or charges. Yes. They are not organized. 
we call it anarchy. They were forced to act on that night. And it will take them a, a while to get organized against Jesus right now. Just a few facts to note about paragraph 154. Let's take paragraph 155a. Look at your outlines. The trial before Caiaphas. The trial before Caiaphas, stage two, the second stage. Look at your L harmony right now with me, okay? Look at uh, paragraph 155 on page 209. Turn the page, 210, 211. And make a note right here. Look at my finger. You will see it also on the camera. Here in John 63, 64, and 65 will be your paragraph 155b. Right there will be your paragraph 155b. Right here. You said John? In, in Luke, sorry, in, June, in, in Luke. All the rest of it in page 211 on the left-hand side here, the totality of page 210 and half of page of page, two, page 209 is your paragraph 155A. So 155B is Correct. Here you will see many laws. And you will see also a violation of Luke's order, and that's why we call it paragraph 155A and paragraph 155b. That's the reason of it. Let's come with me in uh, Matthew verse 57, page 209. We are on paragraph 155a. And they that had taken Jesus led him away to the house of Caiaphas the high priest. Circle Caiaphas the high priest. Caiaphas was the son-in-law of Annas. And Caiaphas served as HP between the year 25 to 36 AD. So we're right in the middle of his high priesthood right now, at the midpoint, since we are in 30 AD right now. But they were seeing Annas as still being the high priest for the Jews only. Caiaphas is the real high priest in that case here. Okay? He served as a high priest from AD 25 to 36. And the trial of Jesus here is happening at the midpoint of his high priesthood. We saw him before in something that I alluded to you right now. When the, the Jews rejected the first sign of Jonah. The first sign of Jonah was the resurrection of, and in paragraph 119 is the one Caiaphas that says what he says. So that's why here in the trial of Jesus, Caiaphas plays a major role. See, it's important to review. You remember the, 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 the first sign of Jonah, the sign promised to the nation? You were right in paragraph 61, there will be no other sign given to you except the sign of Jonah. The first sign of Jonah was the resurrection of Lazarus in paragraph 119, right after the, the resurrection of that Lazarus. It's Caiaphas that says, this man has to go away. Look at Luke 54. And they seized Jesus and led him, led him away and brought him into the high priest's house. Violation of law number six. Violation of law Number six, in the high priest's house. Let me give you an overview of the Sanhedrin before we pause. The word Sanhedrin means the great council. And on the Sanhedrin, you have 71 seats. And I'm showing you right now how they divide the seats. You have 24 chief priests. And the chief priests are Sadducees. Then you are followed by 24 elders. 
the elders are Pharisees. Then you have 22 scribes. That's the Sanhedrin. They are also Pharisees. And then you have one high priest. 8, 10, 1, 2, 4, 6, uh, 2, uh, 2, 4, 6, 7, 71 members. So the high priest is also Sadducee. So you can see that the Pharisees have the majority vote because it gives you 25 Sadducees and 46 Pharisees. Make your notes before we pause. So that's the Senate, but it's good to know, Fred. It's good to know that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay? In the debate, uh, Pharisees uh, were having the majority. They were having the majority. I'm going to give you some figures and then we pause. For trial, 23 minimum is needed. Out of all the 71, you need a presence of 23 minimum. And I told you already that the majority vote were Pharisees. To conduct the trial, out of the 71, you need 23 present. If you have 23 members present, 11 votes is sufficient to acquit the person, not guilty. 11 votes are sufficient to acquit the person. But you need 13 votes to convict. It means this. If you are innocent, you need a majority of one only. If you are guilty, you need a majority of two. I have a few minutes to tell you that we don't know how many there were there. It's impossible to know in the sources, in the Bible, and outside sources, such as Alfred Edersheim and so on. But we know that they were not all there, okay? Because at least we have two missings that were not there. Who they are? Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea were part of the Sanhedrin, and they were not present to plot against Jesus. So at the most, they had 69, but most likely less. At the most, 69 present, but most likely, don't ask me the number, we don't know, probably less than 69. Let's pause and come back in a few minutes, beloved.